My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we're going to talk about uh, a bit of an, inven an invention. So you might have all heard of the Hyperloop. In this video, we'll take a look at the Hyperloop, the brand new method of transport brought forth by the entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk. But it would be for, for a fifth mode of transport. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. The system is proposed to travel at an average speed of 900 kilometers an hour and at a top speed of 1,220 kilometers an hour. It's um, very similar to an airplane on high altitudes. You have a low pressure environment mm -hmm. inside the tube, a capsule that doesn't touch anywhere, hovers, and then because of the low pressure doesn't encounter a lot of resistance. It's also a lot faster. You can basically get from downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in 30 minutes. It's also extremely energy efficient due to solar power utilization. In fact, the Hyperloop could generate more power than it consumes as a closed system. Because you generate more power uh, than, you, than you consume in the system. It's also much cheaper to build. It's about one-tenth the cost of the proposed California high-speed railway system. This means that tickets could cost as little as $25. Um. Oh, it's actually one word, isn't it? Uh, forget that shit, scrub that. This is the Hyperbike. Now I did a video a while back uh, talking about the Hyperloop. It was just a fuck around video, but it got me thinking. The way the Hyperloop works is that you have a tube, and as I said in that original video, you fuck all the air out, <laughs> right? So basically the pressure is like 100 millibars. Right, absolutely nothing. And then what you do is you have a, a, a train, you know, like this, like that, with loads of people in. And because um, there is very little to no air resistance, um, then a lot of your losses have basically disappeared, um, which got me thinking right uh you know i've done a lot of videos in the past about um air resistance and where you know a vast majority of your power goes for your that your engine produces due to uh, when we're looking at top speeds uh you look at streamliners for world's fastest by your land speed record stuff like that uh motor gp formula one rockets planes you name it the aerodynamics of these things and we're talking about skin drag and form drag. So the form drag would be the silhouette of something. Let's just say you have something with a frontal uh, area of one meter squared like that, right? And you say, well, that's your um, form drag. So this is the form, right? But when you look at it from the side, put a tiny dot in there, we look at it from the side, actually, this is a nose cone like this, right? So this is skin drag. So when the air is basically deflected, this is skin drag, right? That kind of thing. Obviously, if it was just a, a blunt cylinder or the end of a cylinder, you would, you know, a circle, you'd it'd be a lot higher, be 100%. So there's a ratio between the two, you know what I mean? So you have a ratio. So this got me thinking about motorbikes and stuff. And I did that video where I showed you a graph of horsepower of bikes versus their drag coefficient, so on and so forth. And if we um, think about this whole Hyperloop thing, the problem with the whole Hyperloop idea was making this vacuum chamber, no matter how big you make it, it's massive, right? You know, you look at the Hydron, the hydron Collider, well, it's, it's this big, you know, and you've got this little beam thing running down it. It's not big enough to get people down. So then it got me thinking, right, so this can be a really bad drawing, but if we get our bike, Right, we've got our tank. You can see me do half of this, fuck it, why not? Like that, and then you've got that section, and then this section. 
Just so you've got your bike like this. Fucking what am I doing? Free hand. See if I can get the wheels right at least. That fork's a bit dodgy. Wheels are a bit dodgy. You get what I mean, right? It's a bike. So if we take this bike, right, and we use the Hyperloop ethos. So what I want to do is put a big capsule around this bike like this, right? And we make this thing airtight and we've obviously got our Johnny fella in here sat on this thing, right? You know, let's just put some dude in there like that. So we'll have to give him an oxygen tank with a regulator and all that shit. We'll have to give him that and we'll have to give you, we'll have to put um, a pr basically a pressure suit, like these orange ones that they did for the um, Blackbird, the SR71. So basically you've got your guy here, right? And what we do is, we same kind of thing, we fuck the air out of it, right? So we pump this down to the same kind of thing, you know, 100 millibars, right, in here. So we basically, Fuck the complete pressure out. So now there's, you know, there's hardly any air in here whatsoever. Right, there's nothing, it's a hundred millibar. It's fuck all, right? So all of a sudden now, our aerodynamic form drag and stuff like that, you know, one of the problems with the rider is, is the bike can be quite aerodynamic, but you with your massive helmet on and your arms stuck out, your knees stuck out and stuff like that. Obviously this capsule will have to be big enough so we can lean it over and so we can basically, you know, so you can stick your elbows out and your knees out and all that shit. And so you can sit up, so maybe a bit higher than this. I've just run out of room for my shit drawing. Um, but you might be saying, well, you know, the, the wheels are now inside the capsule. Well, what we'll do is let me just, in a sense, we'll make this a bit more, uh, not just a concept drawing. So like that, there's the capsule walls. And what we'll have down here is we'll have some other smaller wheels, right? With axles outside of the capsule, like so. But basically we'll have to have some kind of seal here, some kind of lip seal here. Um, and we'll use solid rollers, fuck it, you have metal rollers so you can have very, like, um, a positive seal against there. But because we're not suffering from the aerodynamic drag anymore, the friction of these metal solid seals, you know, you, you'd be like a, there's your roller and then you'll have like a, a, a seal that's attached there and it's basically just deflected out by the roller. And then what we'll do is on the top of these we can knurl these or something, a bit like a dyno. And then basically you run your wheel. We can have some support wheels here so it shouldn't roll around like this. And then they're just like, again, like uh, rolling road wheels, rollers. And then basically our wheel will drive our rollers. So we still have our drive, you know, we still have everything. We still have our braking forces. We still have our, any force that we need to convey. And if you change your sprockets and stuff, because we've got, um, basically a torque reduction and a speed increase here. You can even get even more speed. If you, you know, these are big wheels, let's just say these are one meter in circumference and these are, you know, 0 0.5 meters in circumference. If you add that in and the fact that our aerodynamic drag is, well, it's basically zero. It's not zero, you know, it's a thousandth of the air pressure. Um, but in all intents and purposes, you know, it's like the Hyperloop thing. Apart from you have these capsules, you don't have to fuck around with this massive system that has to sit at a vacuum even when there's no trains going down it. So then all of a sudden, if you've got like, you know, a 200 horsepower engine um, and then this reduction here, because the bike's got too much torque anyway, it's not even fucking wheeling it or anything. Um, because we've got this speed increase and this torque reduction, you know, I'll tell you what, I should have been a bit more prepared. I'll do the numbers for it, but with basically a thousandth of the aerodynamic resistance, 
200 horsepower, this speed increase, torque, it's torque reduction, but yeah, because you the air resistance, you're getting rid of it. Um, I'll do the numbers, and in the next video, we'll do the numbers on it. I also, basically, I'll do a solid works thing of how these roller seals are going to work, because I think that needs a bit more explaining, because at the end of it, I want the, the it to be a rounded cone, so we can have a seal that brushes all the way up to the end, and then have a button seal in the end there. Once you do all that, then we can literally, well, it can go as fast. I would say about 750 miles an hour, something like that. Um, you know, it depends on, the problem is, is if you have smaller wheels like this, it means that you're more likely to have, you know, other issues um, with how smooth your road is and stuff like that. But again, this is just a, you know, you can make them the same size, so the one-to-one, -one, it just means that the capsule's a bit taller, it's a bit heavier. Now, that's the other thing. We can make this out of carbon fiber, um, Unlike the Hyperloop, what we can do is we can put braces on it. It doesn't have to be, um, because we're not traveling inside the capsule, because we're moving with, the capsule's coming with us, then we can have braces, you know, you can have bloody braces in here and braces in here and, you know, a bit more structural support. Like I said, I'll do some CAD models and stuff. It's a concept. There's a few more things to iron out. Basically, these seals is the, my, my biggest problem. But... Um, Apart from that, and yes, an oxygen supply is a bit of a twat, and exactly how we're going to access a door kind of thing, because you've got to think about getting your bike in and out of it. Oh, and the other thing as well is um, the emissions. So, you know, you're going to have to have an exhaust and an intake. Um, you know, an, an intake, so obviously we need to be taking our fresh air. And obviously we need to expel our exhaust gases. The only other thing I think that's a slight worry, but we can have some kind of cooling system, is have some kind of convection current between the inner and outer skin. Like I said, I'll do a bit more on it. I was even thinking about, like Elon Musk did, doing a white paper on it, so you can literally see the difference. But with this, I don't want to say 750 mile per hour, but let's just say within 10% of that, so 675 to fucking 825 kind of thing. Ballpark numbers off the top made. You know, 10%, give or take 20, but 10% either side, so a 20% range, something around like that. So, you know, the possibility of going 800 mile an hour plus. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.